welcome back to my youtube channel it's Sheila Karogashumba thank you guys for subscribing we finally made a hand 10,000 subscribers so thank you guys to whoever subscribed and if you haven't su subscribed yet make sure you hit the subscribe button right before we start this video well so many people have been complaining that I should be posting more of my YouTube content but don't worry I got you guys I'm working on it and you'll be seeing so much so much content coming up well today's topic is a topic that everyone has been talking about in Uganda for you know a couple of days now and so many guys have been asking me why did you leave TV so many people uh, the newspapers are always saying different stories people on Twitter are always asking me people on Facebook even my own family members like cousins nephews nieces uh, fans as well always meet me and they're like Sheila why aren't you on TV Sheila I think you should be on TV there's always so many questions here and there so I'm going to make everything clear and I'll just tell you all about my TV journey from being just a little girl who was just you know just a girl in school to being a TV presenter and to who I am today so let's get right into it this is how my TV journey started first of all I was raised by a single father Mr. Frank Gashumba and since that time I was young, like my parents separated when I was really young, I was around like six years, my dad decided to look for a school whereby I could be in a boarding school and he could do work. And because I mean, he's a man, how is he going to be with a little daughter the whole time and then he has to work? So he looked for the perfect school for me and the perfect school was Tiber Junior School. So when I went to Tiber Junior School, the teachers, there's a teacher in, in particular called teacher, teacher Judy, she saw something in me, I, or I, I was like a, a, a little child who always wanted to participate in like either sports, dancing, singing, emceeing. I was just literally all over the place in school. I just really wanted to be busy doing something. I grew up in an environment at Tybo Junior School where you have to be very creative. They teach the three C's, creativity, critical thinking, and of course confidence. So I had so much confidence when I was young, like age of eight to nine, I was literally so confident. Anything they say, guys, who wants to dance, she lies there. Who wants to sing, she lies singing. Who wants to, to just do anything, I was just the girl for it. So, um, unfortunately, um, around the age of nine to 10, my dad went to Masaka to, for a, a court case that my grandfather actually had to do with land, someone wanted to take his land. While he was at the court, he he met a girl called Aisha Nabokera who had brutally been, been burned by her stepmom. And my dad decided to come, come with her to Kampala, help her get, her, get her, you know, some medical aid that he could, and then they later fundraised. So during the whole fundraising period, my dad and, the, and Aisha Nabokera used to, used to go to different TV stations to do interviews. So this one day, she had an interview at WBS TV station. By that time, it was the biggest TV station in Uganda. And I just escorted my dad. So while Asha was doing an interview at WBS, I was seated in the lobby. My dad had actually left me in the lobby. Um, after the interview was done, um, my dad came back to me. And, you know, in the lobby, there was a young girl who was doing the show by then and a producer called Shamim. Shout out to you, Shamim. They were recording. You know how you do a kid's, new, kids show and the, the, the little girl was recording the, the, the kid's show. So I whispered to my, to my dad. I, I thought I was whispering, but I was actually loud. So I'm like, you know, daddy, I can do better than that, right? So the, the lady hears me. So when she, when she heard me, she was like, did you say you can do better? She was actually, it wasn't like a joke, but she was like, okay, if you think you can do better, here's the mic. So I, I stood up, like I told you guys, my confidence was just too much. So I stood up, I got the mic, and I'm like, the, the lady told, told me, say these words, like, hi, welcome to the show. So I said, hello, welcome to Kids News. I'm Sheila Gashumba. She's like, wow, I like you. Why don't you come back tomorrow? So the next day I went back. I mean, I just got an opportunity. And just, I, I, I was the type of, just, uh, I was the type of girl who walked into WBS and everyone liked Sheila. She was confident. My dad somehow, I, I used to have like, oh, I used to wear all pink, pink clothes, pink shoes had my little phone. I was just this girl that's just different. So they liked that about me. So we started doing kids news. I finally got a job and they gave me a job. They liked my charisma. They just literally liked Sheila. So I started working with this girl. I think she's called Cynthia. I don't remember her. I've actually never seen her again. I, if she's out there watching this video, please hit me up. 
So we started doing kids news, and later they thought about doing a show called Kids Corner, whereby we go to different schools. Let's say kids, kids are having maybe a party, and all these kids, you know, events, we were always there. And I was just that kid that everyone was watching on TV. I used to meet parents then with my dad, and they're like, oh, my daughter watches your show. Even parents were actually watching that show. So by that time, that was the biggest TV, TV as well, and then the TV show. Anyways, as I crossed over from being just a little girl, I then entered my teen years. That's, to, um, that's 13. I'm the type of person who doesn't like to get comfortable at work. So when I was 13, I told my producer, guys, this is Sheila Gashumba. I chase my dreams. I don't wait for my dreams to be, I don't wait for things to fall on my laps. That's never been Sheila, and that will never be Sheila. I told my producer, Shamim, I'm like, Shamim, you know I'm turning 13, right? Can I please join Teens Club? Meanwhile, Teens Club had the best TV presenters then. MC Katz was on Teens Club then. Um, Esco, that's now working on NTV, was on Teens Club. MC Katz of NBS was on Teens Club. Sheila Salter, who now works on NBS Catch Up, was on Teens Club. Regan, there's a guy called Regan. He now moved to Norway. He was on Teens Club. And guess what? This tiny little girl wanted to be on the show. I said, I want to be on that show. I was like the youngest kid on the show. And I, still, I didn't have a problem with it. I just really wanted to grow with the industry because that's who I am. I just feel like, I, I just felt then that I wasn't a kid anymore and I wanted a different challenge. So this show always used to happen on Saturday and it was a live show. So everyone was like, but are you going to manage a live show? I was like, yes, I'll manage the live show. So what they used to do, they used to allow me to do that, like the segment, like a small segment, at least appear, but not the whole show. Because I had, there was Kat Esco who would do the whole show and I was still young. So I would come, maybe be in one segment, you know, because the show is segmented, do one segment and then, you know, go back home. Those days, uh, TV was paying us maybe 20000 a day. You come, you sign for your money, they give it to you. But that's the, I was like 13 then. I didn't mind, I just loved the idea of be, or being on TV. And it was good then. I mean, I was still staying under my dad's house. I don't pay rent, there's nothing that I need. I just, it's just Sheila being on TV. Unfortunately, um, no, actually, during that same period, there was um, the Chogam. I don't know if you guys remember Chogam, the common wealth heads of government meeting that happened in Uganda where the Queen of England came and Prince Charles came to Uganda. I remember Daily Monitor that time was actually looking for teenagers to, to, um, to cover some stories about, because you know there were lots of like events happening during Chogam, there were like teen events where Prince Charles was going to actually come, check out some kids, culture troops dancing, and they actually said you had to be above, you had to be 15 and above, no, you had to be like 15 and above to actually be allowed to work with Daily Monitor for just the Chogam period, because they were calling, one of the segments in the, in the newspaper, one of the columns in the newspapers was Choga, Chogam Teens Column, something like that. But I was 13, so what me and my dad did, we actually had to say that I'm 15 when I was 13, because I told my dad I really want to. I want to write for like Daily Monitor. I want to, you know, I want to be the one putting these stories. Those days, they were, the stories were like 50,000. 50, you give in a story, they pay you 50,000. So I did a few stories for, for Daily Monitor, and Chogam was done. I was so happy that I was the youngest kid accredited to cover, cover the event, because it was so weird, yeah? The, there was actually, there's this, um, the media center in Uganda. I was the youngest there. There were people coming in from all different countries, journalists from Trinidad and Tobago, England, but all the journalists used to ask me, why are you here, like you're so young? But I would always just answer questions, I was just bored, I didn't care that I was in a room of people who are way older than me. But anyways, unfortunately WBS closed uh, during that period and also I decided to take a break off TV. I was still at Taiba at that period and I was just really being out there, dancing, singing, being me, being confident. During that period when I was off TV, there was a news, newspaper ad that Aquasafe, a company, was looking for an ambassador. If you're young and if you think you, you know, you're cool, take a picture holding the Aquasafe bottle and win one million shillings and be our ambassador. 
So I said, yes, I can do it. Me, I was always ready to do anything. As long as I felt I could do it, I was going to do it. My dad went, bought the Aquasafe bottle that they were selling. I think it was something to do with keeping water clean. I took a picture and then I won the one million. And then also I won being the an ambassador. That was my first ever ambassador gig. I got it just like that. Um, so coming to P7, I moved to City Parents. When I moved to City Parents, um, City Parents was a little bit more strict. It wasn't more like Taiba where you dance, you sing. It was more about books you had to, you know, you had to read and make sure you pass. So I did P7. I went to St. Mary's College, Namagonga. Most people don't even know that. And that was also like a really, really like strict school. I used to come back home, I was more reserved, and my dad was like, you know what? I think I need to take you to Taiba. I need, you need to go back to Taiba. I, I miss that Sheila that is, I miss that Sheila that's confident, that comes home and tells me like a million stories. I need, I need that Sheila that comes and dances. You know, when I was growing up, I used to, sometimes when I used to go to events with my dad, because he used to be, you know, sometimes invited to be a guest of honor. He used to always tell them, you know, Sheila can dance on my So I'm there and the MC says, uh, we have a performance from Sheila Gashumba. And I would look at my dad like, which performance? Then they would play my favorite song those days was Blue 3. I used to love being Cindy. So what I would do, I will dance. And then people in the crowd will come give you like 5,000, 1,000, 10,000. So I would always get the money and give it to my dad. And I'm like, dad, you know what? Keep this money. I want that pink Motorola. I'll, I'll put a picture of the Motorola those days. It was like the like in phone, the flip Motorola phone. So I used to do that everywhere I was going until I actually, my dad bought me the phone one day and said, you see the money you've been dancing for? I've topped it up for you. Here's the phone. And having a phone that time was like the coolest thing. So why I'm telling you that part of my story is that I've always worked for what I had. If you ever saw me with a phone, if you ever saw me on a trip, like I'd literally worked for that. I've never gotten anything on, silver, on a silver spoon apart from education because it's a basic need. Anyway, so when I went back to Taiba, the energy came back. I went to Taiba College, the dancing was back, the TV present, I mean, the, the confidence was back, the creativity was back, and I moved, well, I moved to Kaboja. Now, when I went to Kaboja International, my dad felt like I should be right near him. In case, you know that time, in, that time, like those teenage years, you want to be stubborn. My dad was like, you know what? You, you want to be stubborn in school? I'll put you right next to me so that when the teacher calls me, I'm at your school in a minute. So when I was in Kaboja, I was turning 16. So when I was turning 16, I was so, super excited. Those days, I used to watch lots of TV. When I was growing up, my dad used to bring for me, bring different DVDs of BT awards, of MTV awards. Let's say Beyonce had these big shows, live shows. My dad would bring all the DVDs because he, he loved the fact that I was like I used, he wanted me to be exposed, my mind to be exposed, to see how big these awards are. Let's say if Beyonce is doing a live show or Rihanna is doing a live show, I'd always put the videos in, dance like them, pause, learn the dance, pause again, learn the dance. Like I was that type of kid. So I used to watch a lot of TV and, and I used to watch uh, MTV Sweet 16. So I told my dad, Daddy, I'm turning 16. I need a Sweet 16 party. He said, what's that? What's a Sweet 16 party? <laughs> I'm like, Daddy, when I'm 16, I need the biggest party ever. So I said, okay, you want the party? No problem. So I started telling all my friends at school, you guys, I have a Sweet 16 party. My dad is doing for me a Sweet 16 party. Those days, Akasha Lodge were, had just opened in Uganda. So um, my dad was like, okay, I'll get you the venue. There's a friend called Cindy who did the deco. And my dad invited all the media, just like the normal MTV Sweet 16. He invited the media to come, I invited all my friends. Actually, that video is even on YouTube as well. And one of the TVs that were invited was NTV. So during the whole party, uh, NTV, of course, um, liked, like, NTV had to interview me, the birthday girl. And I remember it was Raymond, the, pre the producer then. So Raymond asked me for an interview, of course, since I was the birthday girl, I did an interview and he's like, I like your confidence. I, I think most people when they meet me, I feel like everyone says I have too much confidence. So Raymond is like, I like, I like your confidence. But he said, you've been on TV before? And I said, yeah, yeah, I've been on TV and I would love to be on TV again. He's like, oh, you want to be on TV? Okay, come through, come through what? Come through, um, I think, 
that weekend because I was doing school. I couldn't go on Monday. My party was on Saturday. So my dad, I told my dad, oh, you know what? I've actually, Raymond interviewed me, said he likes, he likes my confidence. I said, and he said, oh, you have some knowledge in TV. And I said, I could even do T Nation. Because like I said to you guys, I'm always the type of person who goes after what I want. Like if I'm in a room, I want to in interview someone, I'll tell them, can I interview you? It doesn't matter who it is. I'll tell you later. You get the memo later in the video. So the weekend came, my dad dressed me up. You know, I got dressed. We went to NTV. So first of all, during that period, NTV was under Kenyans. The, pro the, the, product, the general manager was, Ken was Kenyan, Joe Monene. The production manager was, was, was Kathy. So Raymond literally told them, you know, this girl had a sweet 16, she, this girl had a sweet 16 party. I think she's schooled. She's in international schools. So I think she's going to bring the vibe of international schools onto the show, a different audience onto the show. So what Kathy said, oh, because I remember I walked in with like a weave on, like curly hair. And she's like, you're in school with that kind of hair? She just liked how I was just too much. I was too much for her. So she said, okay, you, you should do some training, field training. So that time, I remember my dad used to drop me every weekend to do the training. I'll go out with them on the field. But I wasn't doing the show then. I would watch the other presenter film as I sit as I sit and watch her. I wasn't given the job just like that. I had to go through field training, see how they interview, see how you read links. And thanks to Raymond, he was really, really helpful. He used to tell me, Sheila, this is how they do this, this, this is how they do reporting, this is how they do, they do links. And next minute, guess what? I was from school, I think on Friday, they say my contract is ready.